So doing a quick follow-up video. Uh, one, I want to talk about trading channels. And two, we're going to recap um, some of the other trades that I call out. One of them uh, being Alibaba. As we see Alibaba, I spoke before that Alibaba had a resistance of 266. And we're seeing a little bit of a pop on Alibaba to the upside. We saw a little bit of channeling between 255 and 266. And then finally, we had two days, several days where Alibaba gapped up. I did buy some more down here um, on the news, on the earnings news. I kind of figured stock was going to trade down. And then we immediately traded back up uh, to the upside. And again, up a day, up another 1.34%. We'll see if Alibaba holds. It wasn't exactly a lot of volume. As you can see, the volume was, let's just say 17 million, but the average volume is about 21 and a half, to, you know, 21.6 million shares on the average. So I would typically want to look for a little bit more volume or at the very least um, to see an average volume day where Alibaba trades to the upside. And that's basically um, momentum trading, right? Where you're looking for, average volume or above average volume to indicate that buyers are basically stepping into the space to drive away sellers to drive out the shorts to short squeeze etc and so we see that very similarly in for example crm salesforce another stock that i told you about uh, where we were trading uh it bounced off of two tens we basically gapped here above 210 and immediately gapped to 270s 280s and then we saw a retest right here fell short actually um, didn't even come to the 210 area it came to about 212 32 13 and then the stock bounced off of what was the support or the resistance previously you can see where we hit 210 here 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 and here and then finally at some point during the day the stock retested 210s and then uh, closed to the upside and so i looking at the stock i could see that I had my resistance. It's a good company. I know the stock is going to retrace after, of course, um, I believe it bought um, it bought Slate work, right? So they bought this company out. I believe, think they spent like $30 million, um, $30 billion or something buying that company. And of course, that is going to drive uh, the share price down because it's sucking liquidity um, out of the, the business, right? So now they have less money to work with. But of course, the potential is that Slate will uh, make the business better so it's an investment it sucks out liquidity it drives the stock down but of course it's a, just basically a buying opportunity now what i what i did want to talk about is that as you can see we didn't really get the volume that i was looking for um the average volume on crm is about let's just say 8 million and for the most part we really didn't see a lot of uh buyers stepping in we are seeing three three trade days in a row where the stock is trading to the upside, but a average volume sell-off could easily retest to 30s. For me, I would look at it as a buying opportunity, which is what I would do. If I see the stock trade down to the downside, if I've got money in my account, I will subsequently uh, basically buy a bit more, hoping that based on technical analysis that the stock will basically bounce off of the 230. The reason that I bring this up is because I had been speaking quite a bit on APXT. Um, Apex Technologies um, basically has been trading in a channel, as you can see based off of the chart. We'll open this up a little bit. And so when you're trading, uh, if you took a position, let's say you bought at 14, but you then subsequently, you know, you were hoping for a breakout above 17s, which of course we did not get here. On high volume, you can see right here, 22 million shares. This, the average volume is on is 2.5 million shares. But you, but as you can see, on a breakout day, the stock came with with huge buyers. The same thing right here. On a sell off day, you see above average volume coming in. The same thing here, where you see um, almost double the volume, but the volume is to the downside. The same thing here, where we had normal volume, but the stock couldn't maintain above 17. Same thing here, same thing here, and of course the same thing here, which is basically why I swung the trade. Um, I currently am long again, um, as I sold yesterday, uh, looking at APXT, um, I sold 1650s. I now have a new position that I'm scaling a little bit more uh, into I've got 105 shares long from uh, 1580 and then the last price was 41 so I'm looking to buy more 
to me it looks like there's some resistance right here so i might look to buy more at the 15th now of course if you look at the chart uh, basically apxt has been trading between 15 and 17 over the past couple of months as you can see so that's basically why looking at my orders you can see right here where i've been buying and then my sell on apxt was down here i sold i had a, a little over 100 shares i sold 50 right here at 1650 and then i sold another here at 1650 and then of course i was long uh, a little bit further down let me see if i can pull up uh, exactly at what prices uh, that i was buying apxt there we go so you can see some buys down here at 1465 where i bought some shares uh, let's scroll down a little bit apxt buying some more at 1525s uh, a little more down here 1525s so so it looks like i started buying at 1550s a little more here at 60 so i was kind of nibbling in and eventually we sold out of everything at 16 1654 and so and then of course out on the sell-off um, and of course the stock did gap higher as you can see i was waiting to see if the stock was going to trade higher because pre-market it was trading i didn't get to sell anything pre-market because this i think was like at eight o'clock in the morning and i came home late from the hospital that day uh, so i wasn't able to get here you know that early to trade pre-market otherwise i would have sold some knowing that the stock intraday typically didn't break 17s and of course the stock subsequently sold off and then of course i bought more on the sell-off after covering my positions and so it's basically if you know that your stock is trading in a channel instead of just basically buy and holding if you know that you're ping-ponging between a support and a resistance then you're better off trading within the channel unless of course you plan on holding the stock longer than a year otherwise there is no tax benefit to holding for you know 11 months and what you know x amount of days right if you don't hold at least one year there's no tax benefit so if that's the case then you might as well intra or swing trade the position this is what i did with jet blue i missed the opportunity last time to sell jet blue when the stock came to 60 again on a decent volume day as you can see it was 12.5 million the average volume being uh, just about 9 million, but they could not breach and hold above 16. Now, of course, I know unless news comes out overall on JetBlue uh, or that there's not going to be such a huge amount of uh, restrictions for traveling, right? So as long as people have to quarantine, they need to get swabbed, etc., that is going to overwhelmingly reduce the amount of people who are going to fly internationally. And of course, with the huge jobless numbers, you're really not going to see people flying back and forth for vacations, etc. And so that sort of news is going to hold stocks like JetBlue basically to the downside. So this to me looks more like a little bit of a short squeeze, people, you know, buyers stepping in. So I took the opportunity to sell a third of my position on JetBlue, knowing that for the most part, JetBlue has not broken above 16. If you actually look back at the chart, you can see back here that for the most part of, you know, from November of 18 into 19 into parts of 20, where basically JetBlue 16 was JetBlue's support. And so since we broke the support, it's going to take a lot of liquidity to basically push the stock to the upside. And so if that, if you understand that, and you know that you're basically trading within uh, trading within a channel, a good example, for example, is NEO. I talked about this before, where we're basically um, trading what looks like between 65 and 55. Previously, we were trading uh, between 38 and 54. We broke below 50, we broke above 54s. And as you can see, it was on volume. The average volume is what? You can see the average volume is 96 million shares. On the day that it broke, it traded 218 million on volume and then subsequently traded higher. And that's typically what you would look for when you're long positions and you're watching for the stock. Is it going to break out and trade to the upside? That's typically what you're going to look for for sustained buyers, right? And so as you can see, the stock has basically traded multiple days. So you can see that 55 has now become a very strong support for NEO, right? So since you can see that one, two, three, four five six we'll just say six seven eight days where it tested 55 where it traded very close to 55 and subsequently bounced off of it so since that's the case that you know i missed the opportunity uh to buy it the other day when it was down here at 55s and i called it out on my twitter for those who of course who have not followed me on twitter uh, you can go ahead and follow me here 
at uh, Xavier Trading LLC. And uh, there's been numerous occasions where I typically will tweet out um, support and resistances either for stocks or for example, for the market, among other shit that I find interesting. But for the most part, overwhelmingly, I would typically uh, post, you know, if I see a particular stock that I'm in, or if I see the market coming up to a resistance, then I will subsequently tweet that early in the morning. Um, same thing, I tweeted that same thing with Neo. I tweeted the same thing with Macy's. When I called Macy's out, I called Macy's out at 14, and I said Macy's looked like it had support here at 14. It subsequently held, and I ended up trading. I got, uh, I think I had 150 shares and sold it at around 15. Let me just double check real quick. Um, let's go orders. There we go, Macy's. So I sold my Ace, my Macy's that I bought. I think I bought it at 14.20, and then I sold the 102 shares that I got at. 15 18 it could trade to the upside i think that there are a lot of sellers who are in the position because of uh because it, it did at one point run up into the 20s and so there's going to be a lot of people looking to get out but if you actually look at the chart it looks like there's a little bit of a resistance at around 16 dollars and so that's basically kind of why I, I had sold my position took a quick play it just basically ripped and came up to the came came to a point where as you can see right here it looks like there might be a little bit of support slash resistance. And so I basically just took profits. We could see it trade to the upside above 16. If it does, I'll get right back into it. That's basically going to be, gonna be it um, for this little session. One point I did want to bring out real quick was, of course, I'm always tracking my dividends. Not too much in the way of dividends for this month, Maine. These are basically my monthlies. Abivi I've got is going to pay me a little bit. Um, gain is basically my monthly main is my monthly always my monthly but for next month we're really going to start to see the dividends for this year from my m1 portfolio is really going to start to ramp up we've hit the 60k mark almost up uh 12k in my portfolio and i'm really looking forward to seeing a lot of these big monthlies come in that'll really it'll really start to uh, snowball the portfolio 440 dollars almost 400 441 dollars the month after that, so January, February, March, April, we're looking at 322. I mean, 181, 182, not much to sneeze at. Another 400, another 350, another 400. These are these are fairly good numbers for my small dividend account. And I remember, you know, kind of like a little baby, when you start take those first baby steps, and you see like those little pennies that come in. You get five cents, you get nine cents. Then then the next month you start adding to your account and you might see you know 50 cents 75 cents and you get your first dollar and now we're not even talking about a dollar or two or five or ten we're talking hundreds of dollars um basically starting a dividend account and i want to take this all the way you know my goal for the year was to take this account to 100k right we're only in the second month um and so i'm looking forward to hitting the 100k mark but that's basically going to be my mark Again, my goal is real estate abroad to diversify more my portfolio. So at minimum, we're going to start to see more days where the average for this for the portfolio is going to be 500 a month. That's my goal for this year is $500 in passive income from from my dividend plays. And then, of course, a lot of my other plays are in the risk portion of my portfolio where, where I add things like BABA, I add things like JetBlue, um, I add things like CRM, Norwegian, et cetera. These are basically Wells Fargo. Um, as you can see, they're, these are basically my more riskier plays that are add to building growth in the account for the purpose of then, excuse me, taking that growth money and then make money on my money. And that's basically what I'm looking for. I've got a buy going in today. Uh, buying 100 of main adding to uh, main because it is one of my monthlies that that pays um, it is a bdc they basically do give out small loans to like moderately sized businesses the reason i bought main over gain was because gain is coming up to uh, a resistance right you can see the resistance right here um, it basically halted we saw a couple of days where it traded at 11.50 before it broke 11.50s you can see the retest of 11.50s and then the subsequent sell-off which is why I did not buy more. And then we had a huge, uh, had a huge gap all day, a gap up day because of good earnings. And so I'm taking a little bit of a step back to see if we see a little bit of a pullback 
that I'm not buying what I deem to be expensive stock. And so main, which I'm looking to add to my monthly, is of course a bit cheaper, obviously, than its counterpart in my portfolio main. J, uh, JP Morgan that I did buy down here at like 129. We're seeing JP Morgan move back up to the upside. And so unfortunately and foolishly, I did sell out of JP Morgan way back. As you can see, I'm not really up that much. Uh, my original price cost is 775 and of course my new price cost so we're up about 50 dollars um looks like we're going to be up another uh one percent today pre-market i foolishly sold it when it gapped up to like up here uh, i had bought it down here and then sold it on the gap up thinking we were going to retrace foolish mistake i ended up did getting of course back into the position um, because i know jp morgan has um a really solid dividend it pays good money it increases their dividend quite a bit so even if we do pull back it was my foolish mistake but of course i corrected that by getting back into getting back into the play knowing that we've got some good upside potential unfortunately at the time i didn't have um, enough money i've got my other account with td but this is basically the account um for passive income dividends i also have my account here that's doing well that's doing quite well my other ira i have another ira here with td um, and you can see this is basically my IRA. I don't even really touch it for the most part. I've got the stocks that I like. I've got my risk portion here. Um, I've got my blue chips that basically it's like 8% just more for stability. I've got a little bit of risk coupled with a little bit of finance, REITs, et cetera. Um, and so this just basically I put in $75, $80 a month, et cetera. I've got it on auto invest. It's kind of like I've set it and forget it. But my other portfolio is a little bit more um, actively basically uh actively traded uh, on my part basically going to leave it here looking forward to an opening it's about quarter two but quarter two and i actually had to redo this video um to fine tune it but i'm gonna leave it here if it's your first time here be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future content and of course please give the video a thumbs up so that it does get recommended by other people i appreciate you watching and i'll check you out next time thank you very much Take care.